Whose voice is that? Alright, we're when I when I went live it went it zoomed him out, see? I don't think that's okay if you want to zoom it in. You need to zoom it in more? I'll zoom it in. Alright, we're live. <laughs> Bunch of people joining. Alright. Alright, and we are live for Celebrity Big Brother Questions with Ricky. So, let's dive into a little bit before going to the house. Before going to the house. What was your motivation for participating in Celebrity Big Brother? My motivation. So I was, uh, was actually in New Orleans at the Sugar Bowl, covering it for Longhorn Network, and I got an email from a good friend of mine who had a connection at CBS, and he most, you know, asked if I would be interested in this season of Celebrity Big Brother. And I wasn't really a fan of Big Brother. I'd watched one episode, and I can remember watching the episode thinking to myself, I could never do that. You know, the, the games and the competitions looked fun, but the strategy and having to be in alliances and watch your back, it's, I've just never really been good at that. So um, I didn't think I'd ever be interested, but it came at an opportune time. And I'm the kind of person where I like to say yes to life. And, you know, my main thing is, is there an opening in my calendar? And is it going to be an interesting challenge? And Celebrity Big Brother matched both. And so once I decided to do it, started to, to talk to my team about, you know, what are the pros of, of us doing this? And I'm an astrologer, and so I always look at a chart and, and see, okay, if this opportunity comes, what's the synchronistic significance or meaning of this event? And for me, based on what I looked at my chart and what I talked to my team about, it's a good time for me to put myself out there and, and really show the world what I'm up to now, my healing work and my astrological work, and, and really just showing people that I'm not a football player, I'm, I'm actually something something different now. Right, it sounds like you were able to really combat any feelings of nervousness and just kind of holster it to your advantage. Um, did you know any house guests personally before entering the house? No. So, um, managing my nerves as a football player, that's it's kind of what we're trained to do, to be able to perform when you're afraid, essentially. Um, to execute your game plan even when you're nervous or tense. And so... Football, my football training really transferred great into the house. Um, and what was the second part of the question? Did I no? I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone go, um, going into the house. Um, I'd heard of Lolo. And I'd heard of most of the people, but I, when I first walked on stage, you know, I was the fifth person called out in the second group, and I looked at the people on stage. I didn't recognize anyone. And then I, when I walked in the house, I kind of recognized Tom Green. You know, he's a he was a big name when I was in high school. So I recognized him, recognized Lolo pretty quick, but everyone else, um, t it took a while to, to, to recognize and to, to place their name. So when it came to living in the house, the number one thing people wanted to know was, did you use cannabis while you were in the house? And um, if not, did you use any of your CBD products from Real, from Real Wellness? Yeah, so the question is, did I use any... Um, Basically, did I smoke or did I use cannabis while I was in the house? Um, before going into the into the house, I talked to the producers and I let them know that I used marijuana medicinally and asked if they'd be okay if I brought cannabis with me. And they said, "Well, there's no smoking on the set, but you know, if it's medicinal and you have edibles or you have capsules, then you're more than welcome to bring them to bring them in." But I opted not to. Um, so, no, no THC for 30 days while I was in the house, but I, I did use CBD. I used our optimized tonic every morning, and I used our maintenance and repair salve um, to massage myself and, and, you know, keep me going while I was in the house. Awesome. And um, how did not having daily access to THC affect you? Not having access to daily THC. Um, honestly, I, I, didn't notice, I didn't notice a difference. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person where I like to keep my mind active and there's no shortage of mental activity while you're in the Big Brother house, whether it's strategy or, or conversation, getting to know people. Um, I was busy and, you know, I, I think we should all have a toolbox, a spiritual toolbox. And I think cannabis definitely can, is one thing that's in my toolbox, but I also have my meditation practice. I have pranayama or breathing practices. And I have my yoga practice. I also practice Qigong and Tai Chi. And so I have 
many tools. You know, I have prayers, I have processes that I run. And the beautiful thing about being in the house is I got to bring all of those tools with me and they, and they help me, you know, keep my mind clear, keep my mind focused and, and deal with the stress because something about being in that house and with the, the threat of being kicked out, it really activates something primal in people and being able to use the tools I have, uh, I think really helped me make it to the end. Tamar's watching and she says hi. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. All right, and um, so moving away from that, other aspects of the house, was it awkward having your every move filmed 24-7? Was it awkward having my every move filmed 24-7? Um, I guess if you think about it a lot, it is, but going into the house I knew the deal and so I you know resolved to get over it as soon as possible and to use it as an opportunity um, you know an opportunity to be myself and to be and to be real and, and I said it after after I came out of the house but you know my main critic um, my wife and my son that, that live here with me and making sure that you know they're gonna watch the show they're gonna watch the live feeds and when I come home you know, I have their check off that I was really being myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought about people that truly know me watching and it made it easy just to relax and be myself as much as I, as much as I could. Awesome. Was there a daily routine for meals, cleaning the house? Um, did someone prepare your meals or clean behind you at all? So was there a daily routine and, and questions about meals? Um, we're very fortunate this season. We had some wonderful people in the house that enjoyed taking care of each other. And some people would cook, some people would clean. Um, you know, I didn't eat much while I was in the house. I didn't have much of an appetite, but you know, Tamar was throwing down on the steak <laughs> and the lamb chops, <laughs> pork chops. And so I, I'd sneak me in a, a, a sandwich, you know, every other night. Um, but honestly, I didn't have an appetite, but, but there are a couple people in the house that really enjoyed cooking and the rest of us got to enjoy uh, and we did our part by, by cleaning. And as more people left the house, depending on what their interest was in taking care of the house, we all had to take on more responsibility. For example, Joey Lawrence was very particular about a lot of things, but he, he really kept us in order and he made sure that things stayed clean. And as he left, we had to pick up the slack and, and make sure that we were taking care of, of business. Um, the bathrooms were clean the least, but... Uh, we did a pretty good job keeping the house in order. And be honest, did you really all not see the light of day while you were on the show? Did we not see the light of day while we were on the show? That's true. We did not see the light of day while we were on the show. There were a couple times where we had competitions and we had to walk from the house to the yard where the competition was. And we had a couple competitions in the daytime. And there was a sliver, you know, maybe about a foot and a half wide where we could see the sky. So maybe one or two days we saw a little sliver of, of blue, but other than that, no sunlight. Um, yeah, we didn't see outside. All right, now let's talk about strategy. Strategy. Did you read everyone's chart before the game started? Did I read everyone's chart before the game started? No. I didn't have access to birth information until I got in the house, and not everyone in the house knew their birth time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone knew their birthday, so I could get some information, but in astrology, you get so much more when you have a person's birth time. Um, but I do feel that it was helpful. I mean, yeah, it was helpful in the game to a certain extent, but just more helpful to my development as an astrologer to be able to look at people's charts and then to be able to watch total strangers um, for, for, for a month. And I learned so much about astrology, and, and I'm you know, working on a blog right now about the, how the how the Big Brother game ended with Tamar and myself and the planet Jupiter is really active in both of our charts. And uh, so look out for it because it's a really interesting way to understand the, the astrological archetypes and how they show up in real life. Was there a point that knowledge of your housemates charts influencing um, your interactions or decisions? Was there a point where knowledge of my housemates charts influenced my interactions? For sure, what I was just talking about, our relationship that I, I, I built with, uh, with Tamar, and looking at her chart, someone I had the birth time, so I knew that she was coming into a big Jupiter time, right? A time where if you're willing to believe in yourself and trust yourself and ask the universe for something big enough, the universe will deliver. 
And, you know, just talking to Tamar and growing close with her and really seeing her believe in herself, um, you know, we made an agreement that if either of us won, we were going to take the other. And, and when I won, I honestly wasn't thinking if I'd beat her or not in the, in the final. I just thought we, we came together, believed in ourselves, had an agreement, and the final two and the final HOH, the tiebreaker with Tamar and myself. And so it's just beautiful when you see a, when you see a story play out like that. And I think understanding where she was in, in life according to the astrological symbols uh, it just made it all the more sweeter to, to play my part in, in the story. And did you have an overall strategy to make it to the end of the game? Uh, I had an overall strategy on how to play the game and it's I had a, a coach Tony Sperano and he would say what he loved about football was that you get to go out there and, and show what you got and see who does it better. So my strategy was to be myself and use my skill set to, to stay around as, as long as I could. Um, and, and it worked, you know. Um, it's, it's interesting in the game, people talk about winning. I think in life people talk about winning. But in that game, it was important to win at the right time, but it was just as important to lose at the right time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, call it synchronicity or call it luck, but I happened to lose at the right time, and then I happened to win at the right time. And uh, did you purposely throw any of the competitions? I, I, I wouldn't use the word purposely throw the competition, but there are certain competitions that I realized winning would be more difficult um, than losing, and so I was okay losing. Um, oh yeah, I think that's the best way to say it. Cool. But I, I mean, if I was in a situation where uh, throwing the competition would have been beneficial, I for sure would have thrown, thrown the competition. I mean, I, I put a deal on the table uh, with Lolo that she didn't even respond, really. But anyways, the deal I put on the table with Lolo was I don't want to have to pick between you and Tamar, so how about I try not to win the final HOH, you guys hash it out, and just make sure that whoever wins between you two takes me as your number two. Cool. And as the last question about being in the house, um, why do you think Tom took you off the block? Why do I think Tom took me off the block? Um... I don't know. It's it's a mystery. I have a couple of I have a couple of theories. Um, my strategy in that in that moment was not to freak out. And I what I noticed in the game is that whenever someone, most people when they are put on the nomination block, even if they really weren't at the target, something primal about the the possibility of being uh, kicked out of the group stirs something up in us, and we get nervous and we start to do things that probably aren't in our best interest. And so. I think for me, when I was put on the block, I just tried to like come to pe come to terms with it, you know, come to terms with this. This might be it. Am I happy with the way that I that I played the game? And I just stayed I stayed focused. And when I really thought about it, I thought, you know, I could be on the block, but there's enough people in the house that like me enough that I could actually survive survive this. And I think Tom realized the same thing that there weren't enough votes to get me out of the house. And you know. Great for his brand, great for the narrative of, of the season. I think he did the he did the, the wise thing by taking me off the block, so I didn't survive something and then gain confidence and power over him. So, and I think he also expected after he took me off the block that I'd come to him and and thank him, receive it as an olive branch, and, and potentially save him for that next HOH, which he didn't have any allies. All right, moving into some reflection questions. Reflection questions. How did it make you feel when nobody voted for you in the finale? You know, I, I try to be austere and, you know, keep my emotions inside, but, but I was a little bit hurt that no one voted for me. I mean, specifically, I thought that at least Natalie would because I felt like we really connected. Um, but when I thought about it further, you know, I realized this season, you know, a large majority of our, of our votes, we voted as a house. We got together and decided this is what we're going to do. And so I don't feel bad because Natalie, who I think was one of the best players, she was voted out for nothing. Joey, who was a you know mm -hmm. showed himself to be a great player, was voted out six nothing. And so I just think it was the nature of the season that we voted as a house and what the house wanted, the house got. Mm -hmm. And when I watched when I watched their reasons uh, for for voting to for Tamar to win, they were all true. I mean, she was hilarious. She kept us laughing. She kept things interested interesting, um, and. You know, from my criteria, she was real, you know, and I think that's what I appreciated about her, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. She was who she was, and she was unapologetic about it, and, and 
that's what I'm about. So I, I felt like, in my view, the two best players made it to the end. Hmm. Do you think Lolo is genuinely angry with you? Do I think Lolo is genuinely angry with me? Um, maybe a little bit, you know, but, um, and it's unfortunate, you know, I, I really feel like, like we bonded and, and created a, a true connection and a true friendship, and it, it would be unfortunate if something like the game play got in the way of, of uh, potential friendship. Yeah. Besides yourself, who did you sense was the most sincere? Besides myself, who was the most sincere? Um, I would say, um, I mentioned Tamar, was, I thought she was real and she was herself. Um, and I think Natalie was herself. I think Lolo was, was herself. Um, I think Candy was herself. And, and I think sincere um, in a Taurus type of way of what you see is what you're going to get. Um, and you could trust her. You know, Tauruses are like the salt of the earth and everything that came out of Candy's mouth, mouth you could trust and you could depend mm -hmm. on. And she was real. And so I think in this down-to-earth, grounded style, no doubt about it, Candy was was the most down-to-earth, genuine, real person. Mm. Was there a time, such as an argument, competition, or anything like that, that you wished you could light up? An argument or a competition that I wish I could light up? No, I, I don't. I don't I don't like the idea of using cannabis as an, as an escape. Um, you know, I think... I think the best thing for me cannabis can do is, is shed, shed a different perspective or a different light or, or just give me perspective. Um, mm -hmm. But I did it, you know, I, I really, again, I think we have different tools, we have different things that we're good at and I think one of the things that I've always been good at is problem solving. And so I, I liked those nights that I couldn't sleep in my mind was just trying to figure out what to do next, what to do next. Because eventually I figured something out, I fell asleep, woke up in the morning, I was able to execute my plan. So, you know, in, in the end, uh, I didn't need cannabis in, in Big Brother House. What was your favorite competition? My favorite competition was uh, Slaughterhouse. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was an interesting time in the game. We'd been in the house for 13 days, and it was a long time. And, you know, we hadn't really been able to get out and move much other than the, the gym. And to be able to run through a house, through a haunted house, looking for a key... Uh, and the ability for me to dive out of that window. Uh, it was just good to get some movement in and, and to get the blood pumping. And we all, I think we all love that one, not the best. Did you ultimately become friends with anyone in the house? Why or why not? And will you keep in touch? Did I become friends with anyone in the house and will I keep in touch? Well, I don't know. I, hopefully, I mean, I, I feel like the bond that I, that I had with, with Tamar was real. She felt like a like a sister, you know, the, the depth of the conversations we could have and how real we could be with each other and just how much we, we t got each other. Um, and I like to think I have built, developed a friendship with, with Lolo and Natalie. Um, it was important for me early in the game to develop, you know, trust. And so I brought them information, tried to be honest and, and straightforward with them. And to me, those are the things that a friendship should be built, at, built around. Um, but I spent the most time with them, and I, and I like to think, like think Candy, too. We have nice conversations playing chess or just talking about life. And again, just a, just a good, down-to-earth, heartfelt, real person. Um, yeah. Is there anything you would have done differently? Anything I would have done differently? Um, I'm, I'm sure there, there are some things that I could have done differently, but I'm not really a big regrets person. And, and I feel, I, I mean, I... Again, I'm sure there are things I could have done, um, but I felt good about the way I played the game. And I think so much before, you know, before going to sleep and my thoughts going around and round, around, a lot of it was questioning myself, do I feel good about the way I'm playing the game? And the nature of the game is you're going to put in, be put in difficult situations where you have to make, where you just have to make the call. Um, and there's balancing being true to yourself and playing a good game and, and trying to win. And... Uh, and I felt like I did a good job balancing those, balancing those things. I think if I go back to before, I, I really understood what this game was about. I think I would have brought a couple more books. You know, we were allowed to bring spiritual books and Bible, Tamar's Bible and Natalie's Bible saved my life. But I think I would have brought a copy of like the I Ching, you know, just a different, a different type of, of philosophy. Because the Bible is wonderful, 
you know, but it's kind of depressing. Um, it's uplifting and there's, there's beautiful things there, but I was really, was really drawn to the, to the Gospels and, and the idea of, of Jesus and, you know, sacrificing himself for, for all of us. And that mythology really stuck with me um, throughout, the, throughout the whole game. Was there anything that you missed most during your time in the house? What did I miss most during my time in the house? Um, I'm not, there were times, yeah, I mean, I, obviously I miss my wife um, and I miss my kids, but, but honestly, I'm the kind of person where when it's game time, I get in game mode. And so there were, again, times that I was lonely and, and missing people, but really my focus was on playing the game, not winning the game, but playing the game. You know, I'm the kind of person that, that I, I won't even say I like to compete but I like to challenge myself. And the one thing about this game is there's physical challenges, there's the mental challenges, there's the social challenge. And, and I think my ability to do halfway decent at all of these different things um, really played to my advantage. And what did you take away from the experience? Are there any new things that you learned about yourself? What did I take away from the experience? Um, well, I think one of the, you know, connected to the last question, um, there's, Things slow down when you're in the house. I mean, there's yeah, you have competitions, but there's a lot of downtime uh, where you're disconnected from all of the things that, that give you comfort, except for food and, and a hot shower. But but you're separated from most things that give you that give that gave me comfort, and so it was a good opportunity to take stock on my life and really think about what's important to me and what's and what's not as important to me, and. Um, just really, uh, really appreciating. It's cliche, but it's it's true. Really appreciating how important my support system and, and my family are to me, and realizing that you know when we come together that we can achieve anything. And when we're separated, we're going to be fine. But it feels much better to to win in life with with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and also an, an appreciation for myself. You know, coming to terms with there's certain things about myself that um, I had to show the world, you know, I show the world my ass, that I can be kind of moody and broody and sharp sometimes, but I can also be insightful, you know, and just coming to terms with all these different parts of myself and in a way that where I don't have to be apologetic about it and own that this is just who I am. And if you like it, you know, we can kick it. And if you don't, that's, that's fine too. Awesome. And just some other questions people are asking. Um, what's in your happy tea? What's in my happy tea? So, yeah. Uh, so happy tea was a, was, is a formula I found in school. I'm studying Chinese medicine here in L.A. And it's uh, the, the name of it in, Ch in, in Pinyin or in, in Mandarin is Gan Mai Dao Da Zha Tang. And it's licorice, um, it's red jujube dates, and wheat berries. So three ingredients. And when you, when you put them together uh, in equal parts, they create this wonderful formula that lifts your mood, you know? It, it helps you relax, and there's something about it that lifts your mood, you know? The, the jujube dates, um, they're you know, the licorice to a certain extent. In Chinese medicine, we say they, they calm the shin, or they calm the heart, they calm the emotions. So they, they, when you feel like you have a heavy heart or things are heavy on you, it's this lifting feeling. and makes you feel happy. And um, a couple of times in the house, the happy tea saved my life. It's, you know, just getting kind of heavy and, and being able to share the tea with my house guests and my house, the housemates. It was great, and it lifted everyone's spirits and we had a good time. Cool. Um, are you still doing astrology readings? Am I still doing astrology readings? <laughs> yep. I had two yesterday and two the day before, and um, it's been a positive thing about being on Big Brother as the world is, is finding out that I'm an astrologer. And when they book sessions, people find out how amazing accurate, insightful, and helpful uh, astrological counsel can be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a win. That's been a win. And again, being in the house, being able to practice astrology, I think really helped me go far in the game, but really helped me advance my astrological knowledge. Would you be a part of any more reality TV in the future? Would I be a part of any more reality TV in the future? My gut is no, but again, like I said, the email comes and my curiosity gets piqued and I'm ready for another adventure, so <laughs> I probably will end up doing more. Yeah. What are your goals in the cannabis world? My goals in the cannabis world are to change people's perception and help people understand at least um, 
what I think is the, the, the true purpose of cannabis coming into the world at this, at this day and in this age. And um, it's really to reconnect us to, to our source, to spirituality. And I think, like anything, if you know how to use it and you know what it's for, you're going to be in a better position to use it in a, in a productive, generative, healthy way. But if you don't know what something is for, you're going to have uh, a greater propensity to misuse it. And I think cannabis is real, and it's and people are starting to, to open to it. Um, and so I just want to see it serve its purpose and help people connect to some some larger whole, some greater purpose, and, and live a life that's more fulfilling, more interesting, more individualistic. Mm. When it comes to real wellness, um, can you ship your products to Maryland? <laughs> when it comes to real wellness, can we ship our, pro our products to Maryland? Yes, we can. Um, real wellness products right now that we're shipping have CBD in them, 0% THC, so they can be shipped um, to most 50 states. Is your Freedom Football League still in the works? Is my Freedom Football League still in the works? Of course it is. Yeah, we're, we're working hard to put this together. Uh, it's, a, it's a project that I'm extremely excited about. You know, I think any true entrepreneur, they have, they've lived their life and they've, and they've had experiences and in their experiences, they've noticed where things can be done better. They've noticed where there are, are, is room for improvement and they create something to fill those gaps and that's what we're aiming to do with the Freedom Football League. Mm. When did you find out who won the Super Bowl? Uh, I still haven't found out who won the Super Bowl. No, I mean, after, so after... <laughs> Um, after Big Brother, we were in a, in a green room doing media, and I think one of the security guards told me that uh, the Patriots beat the Rams, and that it was a boring game. Um, so I don't feel too bad that I missed it. All right, and our last question. Last question. One of the most asked ones. Did you have sex with your wife the day of the finale? Did I have <laughs> sex with my wife the night of the finale? Um, of course I did. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for answering our questions. Yes, thank you. It was fun.